This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Peter Pascali. He is the chairman and CEO of Pyrogenesis Canada Inc. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is PYR on the TSX, and now on Nasdaq PYR. Since we last talked, Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? Uh, great, 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 Robert. Thanks for having me back. And it's great to have you. And congratulations on the uplist right there. That's that's big news. I mean, we last but we last did our interview that was published on March fourth, twenty twenty one. So I think it was a week later that that happened. Yep, it was about a week later. I think we spoke yeah the fourth. We were about a week later. And Peter, you know, you are you already hit on my a little bit on my next question that I wanted to ask you is you know since that interview that we put out on March fourth, twenty twenty one, love to get some more highlights that that the company's put out there since that interview. So uh, yeah, take it yeah. away, and Robert. Lots happens since then. I mean, a week after we uh, we spoke, roughly a week after we spoke, we 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 were listed on Nasdaq. Uh, we came out with our financials. We came out with our year-end financials. Uh, our revenues were up uh, quite significantly, four, roughly four or five million in 2019, to around 17, 18 million in, in 2020. We're operationally profitable after you take into consideration share-based uh, compensation, something over three million dollars. So we're profitable. Um, I, I did one thing, uh, Robert, which I don't, I, I never do. It's the first time I ever did it. I, I spoke recently to Pipeline, and but, but I, I, I defined it extremely narrow i define pipeline as being contracts that we expect to sign within six months not beyond six months and that we are either the only bidder or the lead bidder in a competitive environment that's and we announced that it was over 65 million dollars and robert the reason why i i i, I decided to announce it because i thought it was important that the public understand what's taking place in all of our offerings at Pyrogenesis. It's just, they're all going gangbusters. And if you think that for some reason, even half of that doesn't come through, some half of it falls off, then we're still talking about $30 million. And all of those, that, that pipeline that I'm describing, um, once it's signed, will be, will be completed within a year. So they're not like five-year projects. So we're talking about coming off of 4 million to $18 million in revenues. We got this pipeline that is extremely significant. That's what's happening. That's what's happening in the company. And, and, and within our business lines, uh, Robert, we just announced this week two really major uh, announcements. One is that our, our 3D printing production lines in place. We call it the next gen production line. And it incorporates significant improvements over anything that's out there right now, as far as we know. The production, we've increased the production rate to over 25 kilograms an hour. We've narrowed the particle size distribution. We've decreased the operating costs. Um, our goal, effectively, like I guess anybody's goal, is we're hopefully going to get the, be able to sell profitably below anybody else's cost. So that's our goal with respect to 3D printing. We announced that. The other one that kind of slipped under the radar that nobody really focused on too much was we announced previous to that a small grant we got uh, from the Canadian government. I, I can't remember how much it was. It was a small grant. It was $100,000 maybe. Uh, but it was in support of something that we we're doing for a large aluminum company in, in Canada, Alouette. Uh, and that is we are, they've engaged us to find a way to repurpose a residue that's going to landfill. And it's a challenge right now amongst in the aluminum industry to do that. And we think we could, we, we wouldn't do it. We wouldn't pursue it if we didn't think we could do it. Uh, but it's, it reduces, obviously it reduces greenhouse gases again, like in many of our offerings, if it's not going to the landfill and we can repurpose it, that's the best. So that, that those have been a very active couple of weeks, but those were the three or four big announcements, Robert. To say the entrepreneur answer, like, yeah, no, we could do it. Yeah, of course, we could <laughs> well, figure out something. I don't want to be arrogant, but I'm not so sure there's something that we haven't actually pursued in our 20 year career that hasn't really matured into something. Gotcha. So I wanted to talk about the pipeline a little bit, if you don't mind me following up there. You know, yeah. you said that anything that within that six months that you think you can close. So is that the typical sales cycle? And then are these contracts that are one-time contracts potentially that you're bidding on? Or is it recurring stuff that, you know, every year now they're going to be coming back to all of our All of our contracts that we bid on have some sort of recurring aspect to them, either in maintenance or service, or, 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 or service contracts or spare parts contracts. Um, we're looking for that. We're looking, we're not really doing contracts that are one off. Uh, we don't, we, we stay away from that. We're looking at contracts that have significant future business. That's typically what we do. 
Is that the typical timeline? Um, the timelines are relatively short. I mean, they they don't go on for three or four years like some 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 um, some projects involving waste or torches or things like that might. We 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 the ones that we focus on are typically shorter than that, uh, much shorter than that. Um, yeah, so they're basically they're basically short short in duration and um, large in 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 terms of after sales service and non and recurring revenue. Very good. And I, I mean, who's who's the who's the I'm not going to ask. Sorry, I'm not going to ask who's in the pipeline. Of course, you know. But like, what what's a who's a typical customer base that you're looking to go after? Well, they're basically anything to do with. You can imagine anything to do with our torch, our torch offering, where we get we 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 we're targeting uh, diesel burners and fossil fuel burners for replacement, um, uh, 3D printing powder sales, a draw strike uh, is is a key a key key uh, offering. And things in the draw strike business, what we talked about was um, integrating horizontally, you know, downstream and upstream, doing work on both sides of it. So. That's it's we're, we're not going too far afield. Oh, what we did do, Robert, was we said uh, we announced um, uh, in our in our outlook in our year-end financials that we're pursuing or looking at very small acquisitions, synergistic, where we can leverage up our certain expertise that we have, uh, and we're focusing on private companies. And we announced that one that we're looking at, and you're going to be hearing more about it over the next little bit. Is uh, and we said we said that in publicly. Um, is in the, re the renewable natural gas, where we think there's a large opportunity for us to team up with a player and bring them to the next level. Got it. And Peter, I got to ask you, man, you know, because we've done a couple of interviews now, you yeah. presented our events now, you know, a couple of times, you know, compared to your competition, why in your opinion, do you feel like you'll win out? You know, what's, 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 the, what's the thesis that you'll win? And then also, you know, to play devil's advocate, you know, where, are you, where do you see that you can improve or to compete better? You know, so love to hear your answer on that. Well, because we are, um, we're plasma, we have a, a significant degree of what we got called plasma expertise under our roof. We typically focus on um, situations where we have a clear competitive advantage. We're doing something it's not it's not by a couple of cents here or there it's not by a small margin it, 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 it's it, it addresses a significant problem or we we um, provide a significant benefit oftentimes our challenge is not with competitors direct competitors it's trying to up, uh, unseat a legacy an old technology that people have been using I mean oftentimes there's a mindset associated with you know, continue using the same thing. Uh, like in Drawstrike, we've had this Drawstrike technology for a while. It took a long time to get somebody in the industry to really believe that we could do something. We could recover their their, their waste stream, the, the, sorry, the, valley, the valuable metal in their waste stream without using salt because the traditional way was using salt. Once we convinced someone, it was like a domino effect. You know, the first one we sold was 600,000. The second one was a million. And then fast forward, our, te our technology won uh, seven systems for 20 million. It's like a domino effect. And once you once you be able, once you're able to break that wall and get the legacy systems, put them into question. Uh, that's our challenge. But we seem to be doing a good job of it. Very good. All right. Well, before I let you go today, uh, you know, because look, you're a busy guy. You got a lot going on. You got to you got to fulfill some of these contracts. You know, you got to right, do it. You know, so you know from what you can tell us. I mean, talk about the next time we meet. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, so then, so, so again, before I let you go, you know, from what you can tell us, what what would you say? I asked you this question last time too, but you know, we got to get the, the new update. You know, what yeah. what would you say are some of the growth drivers, or what maybe the one or two things that so, investors should look so for? What should people? Forward? What should people look? Too is basically, are we getting closer and doing what we said we're going to do, or articulated our what our goals are? In other words, look and see who who are we who are we teaming up with? Who are we going to who are we going to acquire? Uh, uh, powder sales. When we start having powder sales and three D printing, uh, but more importantly, I guess uh, torch sales, torch sales uh, that are targeting the iron ore pelletization industry, and as well as more draw strike systems and how we team up with that joint venture where we're going to actually take the residues and draw us right and, and, and bring bring them to another level of, of value. 
Um, these are all things that are in the offing right now, imminent. And so each one of those things as they come out are going to be clear indications that we're on the right track. Very good. All right. Well, then, uh, you know, I'll let you go then today. All right. So then <laughs> I, I got nothing else. So Peter, another six weeks, eh, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Peter, where can our audience, where can our audience go and find more information about Pyrogenesis? Uh, just on our website, pyrogenesis.com. If they have any, any questions at all, I'm trying my best. I'm known to be, uh, to respond to email requests or if they, if they post a, a question um, on, um, on another platform is where they can put, I'll, I'll answer it. I'll answer Very the question. Good. Very good. All right. Well, with that, we're recording this on Friday. What, what's today? April 23rd. Go have a nice yeah. weekend. Really appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, good luck. Stay safe. And I look forward to our next update. Thanks a million. All right, thank you.